Hi, I'm Kevin Musselbrook, Customer Services Director for Access. I'm here today to talk about the three changes to VAT legislation that need to be implemented before 1st of January 2010. It's important to know what these are, understand what you need to do, and set aside the time and resources to implement these changes. So let's look at each one of these in turn. Firstly, VAT rate reversal. The VAT rate on the sale of standard goods and services will revert back from 15% to 17.5% from 1st of January next year. This apparently simple change may have greater impact than you think. Businesses will need to have the facility to handle both rates of VAT for a transition period as they will be receiving invoices at both 15 and 17.5% from their suppliers in early Jan. Businesses may also have sales orders that were taken in December, but which have yet to be fulfilled in January. The new rate of VAT will be need, need to be reassigned to those outstanding orders, and the VAT rate and values recalculated. For those businesses servicing the retail sector, then this could impact profit margins, and businesses may wish to review their pricing. For those businesses providing continuing services, such as maintenance contracts, then special rules apply to determine when the new VAT rate is applied. The next major change is to the EC sales list. Traders who supply goods to businesses in the EU have always been required to provide a list of those EC sales. These suppliers are declared on an EC sales list and from 1st of January a number of changes have been introduced. Firstly, the period for reporting sales of goods used to be quarterly. This has now changed to monthly for most businesses. These monthly submissions must be submitted within 14 days of the month end for paper submissions and 21 days after the month end if you are submitting your report electronically. If you submit an EC sales list electronically from your account software, then the format of the data submission will change and a revision to your software may be required. There's also a new requirement to report on the sales of services Previously, the report only captured the sale of goods. The rules for accounting and reporting on services have changed significantly, and this is the third area of legislation that I want to cover with you in more detail. From 1st of January, the EU and HMRC have introduced a whole new process for the accounting of VAT on buying or selling services across the EU. For business-to-business -business transactions, traders will need to apply reverse charge VAT to each transaction. The application of this reverse charge VAT will only apply to the service element of an invoice, but will need to be implemented for both sales and purchase transactions. If you sell services to business within Europe, then you need to make this VAT treatment evident on your invoices for your customers. As reverse charge VAT can only be applied to bona fide businesses, you must also be able to substantiate to HMRC that your customer is a proper commercial business and not a retail customer. You obviously need your internal systems to be able to differentiate between goods and services and their taxability in order that you can apply the right VAT treatment. If you purchase services from the EU, then you have to account for UK VAT as both input tax and output tax on the incoming transaction. Unlike acquisition tax, reverse charge VAT will update different boxes on your VAT 100 return, so you must be able to analyse the values separately. There are also some significant changes to the determination of tax points on services. These new tax points are now driven by payment or delivery date in preference to the date on the invoice. For businesses that provide a mixture of goods and services on a single invoice, this requirement has been deemed by many as unworkable, but does need to be reviewed. Another implication of this change is that for the first time, businesses will also need to submit an EC sales list for services. Previously, the EC sales list only captured the supply of goods. The EC sales list for services can be submitted quarterly or monthly, and you also have the option to make one aggregated submission covering both goods and services. For all these changes, different businesses will be affected in different ways. And the best approach is to look at the areas of your business that the VAT change affects and speak to those people within your business that will be involved in making those changes. 
You should also talk to your software provider if you haven't done so already and they'll be able to provide you with guidance on what needs to happen in terms of software updates. You need to ensure that you've alloc allocated enough time to implement the changes and this will vary depending on the size of your business and the resources that you have in place. Planning is vital. If you have any questions at all, I'll be happy to help. I'll also be keeping you updated on further legislative changes, so I hope you'll join me again soon. Thank you.